What's up, ladies? How are you guys on this precious Saturday morning? I pray that everybody is <clears throat> doing well. Um, I am here on a Saturday morning. I know y'all was like, what's going on? For some of y'all that don't know, y'all was probably looking for me on Tuesday and Thursday saying what's happening with the dream interpretation and the spiritual warfare. Amen. Um, meetings on Thursday. And right now at this moment, I am coming back hopefully next week. Amen. To be able to go through um, my testimony with you guys. So hopefully for next week, every night, I'm going to be going on live to do my testimony. Once I'm done with the testimony, then I will go and start my Tuesday and Thursday again. But I'm doing a lot of things for the women's ministry and we had a beautiful fast yesterday. So I am so very thankful to God be all the glory for everything that God is doing. It is early in the morning, but the Lord gave me a word for you guys today, and I hope that it is a blessing to your life. So as the women of God, amen, hallelujah, are coming in, I am just going to be pulling up my notes, amen, hallelujah, because we are going to get ready, amen, to just let the Lord have his way today. And we have a very, very, very powerful, amen, video for you guys today that is going to be an absolute blessing, amen, hallelujah, to your life. Let me know who is on this morning, amen, so I can definitely say hello, amen, to you. And I am pulling up my notes now, amen, and I cannot wait to get started with this word that the Lord gave me, amen. It is going to be powerful, Amen. We're going to talk about six different ways, amen, for you to break free away from witchcraft spells and um, all type of spiritual warfare. Okay, so we're going to have a really good live this morning. And I know, like I said, that God is going to have his way. Amen. Um, so one of the first things that I want to talk about this morning when I got up, right? Yesterday, we had a beautiful fast. Amazing. Everything was like off the chain. This morning, I woke up. I didn't even get a chance to wipe the crust off my eyes. And I was looking at my Facebook. And for some reason, there was this guy that wanted to start arguing with me early in the morning. And I'm like, this man, I'm like, Lord, what is going on? I'm like, where did this devil come from. I'm like, who sent him early in the morning? I'm like, I didn't even get a chance to wash my face and I have to wake and I'm already waking up positive. I'm already ready to, you know, cause it's like, I feel like I'm walking towards my dreams. <laughs> like I feel like I'm like, God is speaking to me in so many different areas in my life. And I feel like I'm walking in my purpose. I feel like God is doing amazing things. I feel like there, are, um, the atmosphere is shifting. I feel like there are people that are so evil that are, are doing spiritual warfare attacks against your life. And when they start throwing spells and things like that in your life, you got to understand that they get frustrated when a person is in God's perfect will. So whenever they see, I'm so sorry, can y'all see me? I feel like my glasses is like, <laughs> you know, like they hate it, right? When a person is in God's perfect will. And it's like, that's really what I want for you guys as well. As women of God, I want you guys to know Amen. That we are all in his will, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, like, yo, we in his will, we're in his, in his glory. We, we have the mercy of the Lord and there is nothing, amen, that the devil is going to do to be able to overpower the enemy, right? We have to have our mindset as kingdom minded women. We have to understand that the devil has no power Amen. Every stumbling block that the devil throws in the mighty name of Jesus is broken. Amen. Every evil dart, every evil desire to not want to have you succeed, to not want you to move forward. It is a mental lie from the pits of hell. We have to mentally break free from that in Jesus mighty name. So whenever you you're experiencing setbacks and delays in your life, I'm going to give you guys some powerful tools, amen, to be able to navigate that. Because as I'm on this journey and I'm seeing God move in a mighty way, I noticed that the devil sent this guy who's a supposedly Christian, right, my way early in the morning so that in my heart, amen, there could be an offense built up in it. 
And I had to learn, right, in the spirit to, to bind it. I had to learn in the spirit to not let the enemy, right, have his way over my life. This is why the Bible says we got to be wiser than the enemy. We got to be wiser than the serpent because the serpent is always going to masquerade like a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ. But a real true brother and sister in Christ is not always trying to make everything a competition of who's right and who's wrong, right? That's how you could tell people are led by the dead devil, right? It's always a competition with them. It's always, oh, who's right and who's wrong. It's always like, oh, how can I make you look bad? How can I, you know, put you six feet under? And this is why the Lord, he gave me Proverbs 423. Okay. So the first, you know, tip that I want to give you guys, ladies, whenever you guys are dealing with spiritual warfare attacks, you're trying to, you know, get to a destination, you're trying to get to a place. You're trying to go where God is taking you. Amen. Hallelujah. You're trying to overcome. Amen. You are mighty woman of God. You just need the tools. Amen. You just need the, the resources. You just need the circle. Amen. You just need the, the, the right people on your side. Amen. And the Lord was putting guarding our hearts against offense, right? The, one of the things that I noticed is that I'm more powerful in the spirit when I guard my heart. We know this verse. We, we've seen it a thousand times, but I've noticed that the more I meditate on this word, the more the devil tries to use other people, right? To come into my life and, and, and influence my life, right? They try to do anything can, can, can bring offense. You being irritated with a person could bring offense. You not wanting to speak to certain people could bring offense. And it's not that you don't got to, I'm not telling you, you got to speak to them. I'm not telling you, you got to deal with them. But what I'm saying is that there is a power and a glory. Amen. Hallelujah. That is released into our lives. Amen. When we guard our heart, amen, against an offense and an offense will come in many different ways, right? So an offense can easily creep in, especially when we are faced with criticism or negativity. Amen. This is why I love to watch the circle that I keep. I love to watch the people. Amen. Hallelujah. That I keep close to me because I know that the minute that I start allowing people with a criticizing spirit come close to me, I know that once I allow certain people with a negative spirit come close to me, guess what's going to happen? It's going to start uh, the spirit of offense. Amen. It's going to start taking, um, not control over my life, but it's going to start ruling in my in my spirit. It's going to start ruling in the, in the atmosphere, in the area. And the Bible is saying it very clearly. Amen. God bless you, prophet. Amen. The Bible is saying it very clearly. We need to keep our heart. Amen. Um, to God be all the glory. Amen. We need to keep our heart. Amen. Clear. Amen. Of all offenses. Amen. We need to keep our mindset clear. Amen. Hallelujah. Of all negativity. We cannot allow the negativity. Amen. To, to be in our midst as we're trying to do the will of God. One of the questions that I always had for Jesus was, I wonder how you, he was able to do the signs, the miracles and the wonders, right? In the midst of his enemies, in the midst of people who doubted him, who hated him, who didn't like what he was doing. They didn't like the way he was shifting. Amen. The atmosphere. God bless you, Nigeria. Amen. Welcome. If you could please like the video and share it so other people, amen, can get on in the room and don't worry. We have a private WhatsApp group that we're opening soon for everyone that is in Africa. Amen. And in Pakistan, two separate rooms. Amen. So look out for that. Amen. So, you know, that's one of the things that I always wondered. I'm like, Jesus, how did you do it? I'm like, man, I love you, Jesus, so much. And I just want to know how were you able to please, right? The father in the midst of your enemies, in the midst of your, your haters. And I will always ask Jesus this because, I, I, as a pastor, as a prophet, somebody that's learning to walk in their gift, even though I've been in ministry for 15 years, I'm still learning. I still don't look at myself or consider myself somebody that's like really, really like up here, even though some other people would be like, okay, you really up there compared to where I'm at. But I love to be humble. 
Amen. I love to walk with, with a teachable spirit. And I always want, and yes, I make my mistakes, but I always ask God, right, for mercy. I always ask him to forgive me. I always ask him, right, to lead the way. But I always wanted to know that because I've been in rooms where it's been animosity from other bro so-called brothers and sisters in the faith, right? I've been... Amen. I will try to accept the friend request. Amen. I have like so many in there, but I'll try to look out for your, your name. Amen. You know, I've been in rooms where I'm like, man, you know, you think certain people are your friends and, and, and brothers and sisters in the faith. And you're like waiting, amen, for, for them to be activated. You're ready to go into battle and you ready to go with your brothers and sisters that like you're ready to please the Lord. You're ready to please Yahweh. You ready to like please the father, the Holy Spirit. And it's like you, you look back and it's like instead of them going into the battle against the enemy, sometimes it feels like they want to go into the battle with the prophet. And this is why is, is, I'm speaking this because this has a lot to do with witchcraft. This has a lot to do with it because inside of your life, right, there's a, there's a warrior inside of you right? It needs to be developed. But how are you going to be able to develop it if you don't have the right people around you? How are you going to develop it if you're not in a ministry that has authority? How are you going to develop it if you're not surrounding yourself with people who take this walk seriously? So it's like if you're surrounding yourself with people who are just pigeons and they all flocking together, you're never going to go nowhere, right? You're never going to be able to go higher. You're never going to be able to go into dimensions with the Lord, with the spirit, right, of the, of the living God. You're never going to be able to experience not only breakthrough, but you're not going to be able to see chains break against darkness. You're not going to be able to see those witchcraft spells break and, 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 and just be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. You're not going to be able to see, right? All of those, you know, witchcraft spells and all of those evil, um, spiritual warfare attacks that are straight demonic from the pits of hell. You're not going to be able to see them go away from your life if you're not truly rooted with the right people. So it hurts hurts when you want to, you, you, you need things to break in your life, but there is no one that is around you that is, that has the ability, amen, to take the things that you're going through seriously, because the things that you'll be dealing with, the things that I hear people dealing with, with sp spiritual warfare, with their family members, with their husband, with their kids, everything is just out of order. Everything ain't going right. They just losing their mind. They just like, man, I want to experience what you experienced, Patora, but I can't. They're like, man, I'm frustrated. I'm going through this. I'm going through that, right? The enemy's doing this. He's doing that. And then they're like talking about all of the, the witchcraft stuff that they're, fit, that they're dealing with, right? So when we protect our heart, how are you going to be able to escape the devil? How are you going to, you got to re, you have to be strong enough. Like if you're not strong enough to do these six, six things, Amen. That I'm going to give you today. If you're not strong enough to do this, you're going to die in the spirit. Like you're going to die. The enemy is going to win over your life. And that is not your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not perish, amen, on the battlefield. We will not die, amen. The enemy will not have his way, amen, in the mighty name of Jesus. So when we are protecting our heart, remember what I said, write this down. Protecting your heart against what? Against offense. That's number one, right? So remember, the offense can easily creep in even when you face with criticism or negativity. So remove the negative people out of your heart, right? It says by guarding our hearts, we can preserve bitterness, right? And stay focused on our faith. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. We have to stay focused on our faith. Amen. There are so many people that come to bring drama. Amen. And this is why it's a beautiful thing. This is why I said to the Lord this morning, I was like, God, you know what? I thank you because you keeping me in perfect peace. I thank you because you frustrated my enemies. I thank you because I'm not going to give them the power. Amen. To destroy my morning, to destroy my day, to destroy my, 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 my heart, to destroy my spirit. Amen. I am going to keep my mind focus amen on the things above i'm gonna keep my mind focused on the lord because people are gonna come and bring all that drama into your life but they not able to experience what you're experiencing they not able to have the blessings that you able to have and i say this because when i look at my life and what god is doing in my life i have to remember that to be able to preserve what god has given me for me to be able to see 
his power and his glory being manifested in certain areas in my life and to see the blessings pouring down. Amen. You have to have, you have to keep your heart in a posture that is clean, right? So this is why when you look at Proverbs 4.23, what does it say? It says, above all else, amen, says the Lord. He says, above all else. He say, before everything, amen, before any thoughts, before anything comes into your mind to do this, to do that, he says, guard your heart. This is something that the believers need to be doing every single day, amen, against the enemy, against principalities, against rulers of darkness. You want to strip those people, amen, hallelujah, of their power. You want to strip them demons. You want to strip them witches and them warlocks that are doing their evil incantations. You want to overpower them. You want to break the yokes. You want to see the blessings and the overflow coming back into your life above or else, amen. If one of y'all could put that in the chat for me, amen, Proverbs 4.23, that way they can have it, amen. It says, above all else, it says, guard your heart. It says, for everything you do, amen, flows from it. There are things that I'm doing, amen, in my life that I thank God for because it is my heart, amen. He knows my heart. Other people could come into your life and they could criticize you. They can make fun of you and say, oh, look at you. Look at you, you so-called Christian. Look at you, what you're suffering. Look at you, look at what you're dealing with. But in the mighty name of Jesus, amen, we cannot allow Amen. Other people to come in and make fun of us and make fun of our life. No, because they people will do that out of jealousy because they see where you at now, but they, they also can see where you're going. So there are certain people in the spiritual realm as a believer. Amen. God will give you his power. Amen. He will give you his glory. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. And Cynthia, God bless you. Amen. He will give you his power and his glory. Amen. Pakistan. God bless you, sweetie. Amen. If you guys could like the video, share it. Amen. So other people could get on into the room. Amen. And like I told the other brother earlier, we have two rooms that are opening up. One is going to be for Pakistan and one for Africa. So please be on the lookout for those rooms. Amen. So when we guarding our heart, we have to remember that God is the one that is in control. There is no reason why us as Christian women, we should feel right overpowered by the devil. We should not feel overpowered by the enemy because at the end of the day, he has no power. And I came on here this morning because I want you to remember, amen, the word of God. Amen. I want you to remember about what the Lord is saying this morning. Amen. He says above all else. Amen. He says, guard your heart. He says for everything you do, amen, it flows from it, right? It flows from your heart. I've been watching my ministry to me. My ministry is not a game. Amen. I've been doing, you know, these videos since Periscope days. You guys, some people don't even know what Periscope is. Amen. That was like 2013, 2014 when that thing was hot. Amen. That was before Facebook. Okay. I was doing my live videos. God called me to do this. Amen. To bring inspiration to women's life and to bring the word of God. Amen. To uproot negativity, to, to plant, to, to sow, to, to grow. Amen. And I believe God. And it's like so many people will be trying to watch you and your life and what you doing. And it's like a lot of people, even in Christianity, it's like they don't know how to mind their business. They sometimes don't know how to let people live their life, right? They don't know how to let people grow in the spirit. And so you got to be very careful because witchcraft and spiritual warfare attacks can easily enter your life because in the spirit, you're not protecting yourself. You're not looking at your life. You're not looking at your ministry. You're not looking at your kids in in that spiritual in that spiritual manner and this is what God wants you to do this morning he wants you amen to look at your life in a spiritual in a spiritual manner Amen. He wants you to look at your life in a way where you're going to be like, dag, God, I want to get ahead. I want to do things, right? So we have to break, amen, every witchcraft spirit. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus today, Lord, everybody who is connected, everybody who is catching the replay over my life, over our ministry, Lord, we ask you to let your power 
and your will and your glory, hallelujah, have its way over our life. Lord, we bind in the mighty name of Jesus every evil work, amen, every darkness, every hindrance, every jealous spirit of full of jealousy and envy who does not want to see, amen, your children succeed, Hallelujah. We bind it. We declare that we are the head. Amen. We declare that we are not the tail. Every spirit of stagnation, every foundational power. Amen. Every generational curse spoken over our life. Amen. Is dismantled now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It can't surround. It cannot be in our midst. It cannot be. Amen. In our circle. It cannot be. Amen. In our life. So once we know that, that's why it makes it easier for us to protect what? Our heart. Once you know you got purpose, once you know you're going somewhere, once you know the word of God, you're not going to allow people to come into your life and bring offense. You're going to be more protective over your spiritual walk. You're going to be more protective, amen, hallelujah, over the things of God. Number two, keeping your eyes on Jesus, amen. When we focus on Christ, right, uh, no matter how many distractions and negativity is trying to come our way, when we maintain our focus on Jesus, what does that do? Amen. Answer me in the chat. What does that do? It helps us resist the lies of the enemy. The enemy is a liar. Amen. You are not sick. Amen. You are not broke. Amen. Hallelujah. You are not going through it. Amen. It is a lie from the pits of hell. Refocus your mind. Understand who you are. Amen. In the will of God. And you will see so many things. Amen. Will start to flourish. Amen. Hallelujah. In your life. When you look at Hebrews 12 2, what does it say? It says, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Amen. It doesn't say fix our eyes on this person. It doesn't say, God bless you, Laura, my love, fix our eyes on that. The word of God is saying to us, fix our eyes on Jesus. Amen. He has to be the one. That's why when that man came into my page this morning, talking all that nonsense, I was like, I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. I was like, we're not, this is not a competition. You come in on my page like a little sissy and you supposedly a man of God, right? Trying to be like, who's right and who's wrong. I'll be like, I, you know, who sent you? Like, that's my favorite word. I've been saying it for years. Like, yo, who sent you? Where did you come from? What pit did you crawl out of? Okay. Coming into my life with your negativity, right? Because if you want to speak the word or if you want to bring some type of correction, when somebody really has the spirit of God, they're going to do it in a loving manner, in a way that doesn't bring, that doesn't shame you, in a way that doesn't make you feel offended, right? They're going to give you the truth in such a way that is going to be seasoned with grace. It is going to be seasoned with power, anointing, boldness, but it's also going to have love. It's going to have, you know, seriousness right to the matter. So we have to keep our eyes on, on Jesus. It says fixing our eyes on Jesus, who the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, right? He is the pioneer of the faith. He is the, the perfectioner of our faith, right? Our faith is going to grow as long as we uh, keep our eyes on him. We can't always want to have the answers to, oh, here comes this person with this drama. Here comes this person to do this. Here comes this person to do that. The devil is a liar. You are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your ministry is blessed. Amen. Darkness is not going to be able to prevail. Right. And it took a long time. Even in this season, the Lord is just, I feel like he's just taking me to boom into a deeper dimension to understand, like, listen, the devil, it, he has the ability to plant things in, in, in the believer's life. And even as the prophet, even as the pastor, you also have to protect yourself, right? against his schemes because he will make you see things this way, but you got to make sure you seeing things according to the scripture, according to what the word of God says, right? So when he came into my page with his drama, I was looking at what? Jeremiah 9, 23, thus saith the Lord, let not 
the wise man glory in his wisdom. So you see when people try to come arguing with me, like, oh, I know the word and you don't know the word and I'm more skilled in the word and you not and you preaching. And if I was preaching, I would do it like you. Okay. So then go turn on your live, go turn on your Facebook and go do it like me. If you could do it like me, go do it better. Amen. If you could do it better. This is why I say there are people, amen, in the kingdom of God. Sorry, the commercials. There are people that are in the kingdom of God that always want to make things a competition. And it's like, man, ain't no competition here. Like I'm just trying to be better. Amen. Hallelujah. Than the person that I was yesterday, but sometimes, right. It makes it very difficult when we trying to do the will of God and people just coming with their foolishness, people just coming to, to stir up the, 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 the beehive in our life, trying to bring the offense because the devil who is trying to continuously overpower you, he will make you start arguing with people in your dreams. And boom, plant the offense there. He will start bringing people into your life to bring drama and chaos. And it's like, man, that's not what God wants our life to be like. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants our life. Amen. To, to have, he wants us to have good people in our life. He wants us to be surrounded with positivity. He wants us to have people in our life rooting for us. But what happens when the spiritual warfare attacks are taking over and you're not seeing the fruit in your life? You have to counter, you have to attack that. You got to stand up against those principalities and fasting and, and, and separate yourself. Amen. That's what real consecration is. When you separate yourself for the things of God, for the work of God, right? Because you know that you had this darkness, amen, that needs to be destroyed. This is why when I looked and it said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. It says, let not the mighty man glory in his might. Amen. And let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him who glories in this, that he would understand and knows me. Amen. That's what the Lord wants us to be proud of, not arguing about who's right and who's wrong and who's better and who's that, whatever. It's not a competition. This is why I can't stand it. I hate it when people try to come into our ministry and compare me to things that other people is doing. Amen. I'm minding my business. I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't got to go copy what nobody else is doing. Amen. They, those people who are copying me are making it a competition. I am. The competition is done. Amen. I won. Okay. Jesus is one. We won. Okay. There is, no, there's, there's no competition. Okay. The only person I'm competing with is the person who I was yesterday. Okay. I'm competing to be a better person every day. I'm competing to, to be a better woman of God. Amen. Every day. So it says, um, that he knows me and that I am the Lord exercising what loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. You see, God will give loving kindness. He will give righteousness to the earth and he will give judgment to those because he says, for I delight in these things, says the Lord. So this is why I don't have to worry. Amen. God bless you, Nevada, my love. Amen. I don't have to worry. Amen. You don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. Amen. God has all of our issues and all of our problems. Amen. He has them boom in the palm of his hand. All of our enemies that think they getting over all the people who, who are deceitful and just watching us and not, you know, there are people sometimes that God will send into our life and they are supposed to be there to bless our life. But guess what the devil does? He goes and he sows these different seeds in their life of discord, right? Of anger, of malice, right? And they don't want to be a blessing. And we have to remember how important, amen, it is for us to keep being a blessing, for us to, to do the will of God, for us to, to find ways where we can bless people's life through the word, bless people's lives, you know, and just see a smile on their face. Just see, you know, just plant a seed of hope into their life. Amen. So when we dealing with the enemy, we have to number three, right? After we, we keep our eyes, like I said, in number two, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Number three is recognizing the lies of the enemy because the devil is a deceiver. His children are deceivers. They're trying to make you feel like you never going to get ahead. 
They're trying to make you feel like, man, what you need ain't going to come through. Lies. Amen. God always comes through. He always comes through on time. Amen. There's no reason. And if God causes us to lose certain things in certain seasons, we have to understand that it is for his benefit. It is for his glory. Amen. He's doing so many things that we cannot say, God, why are you doing it like this? God, why are you doing it like that? We just got to trust him. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to trust his will. We have to trust his ways when we don't understand it. Amen. That's why it's hard for a lot of people to be a Christian. That's why they go and they look for those false prophetic words because it's like, no, I need a word now. And then they're not willing to be processed. They're not willing to wait on the Lord. They're not willing to, to trust God with every single thing. Amen. And we have to be willing to trust God in every single thing, in every season, in every moment, in every situation. We have to trust in the Lord and know that in everything, the devil is a liar. As you trust God in everything, amen, you know, amen, that the devil, amen, hallelujah, is a liar. Look at what John 10, 10 says. It says that the thief comes only to steal, amen. Let me know in the chat, what is the enemy coming into your life to steal? What is he trying to take, amen, out of your life, amen? What is he coming to kill, Amen. Not only does the enemy come to steal from you, but he comes to kill, kill things in your life. He comes to kill your mind. He comes to kill your spirit. He comes to bring in security in the house. Amen. This is why we have to learn. Amen. Hallelujah. To bind. Amen. The devil, bind the devil and all of his schemes, bind the devil and all of his shenanigans, everything that he's doing through the word of God, right? We can bind the, the strong man. The Bible says that greater is he that is in us. Amen. Yes, we're busy. Yes, we have a lot of things going on. Yes, I want to do certain things at this time, but it doesn't work like that. I work, my family, we have so many things going on, but we trust God. Everything is going to be done in his timing. Everything is going to be done how he wants it. Amen. And he is going to bring people from the north, the south, the east, and the west and he's going to place them before our feet. Listen to me this morning. Amen. He is going to place the people that we need to help push us. Amen. Into arenas to push us into certain atmospheres, to bring the provision, to bring everything that we need. Amen. He's the Lord is going to lay it at our feet, but we have to posture ourselves in a position where we know that the enemy will always try to sow doubt and fear. Amen. Into our life. Discouragement is what the enemy likes to do. He likes to discourage you from the will of God. He tries to discourage you from this and that because it's not looking the way you want to see it. Amen. But he, the enemy, he comes to steal our joy, to steal our blessings. Amen. But we have to understand his tactics. Somebody can say, can somebody say amen? We have to understand his tactics. And what do we have to do? We have to block Amen. Hallelujah. His blessings. Amen. We cannot let his blessings. Hallelujah. Overpower our life. We cannot let the, 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 the blessings of the Lord, right? Go unnoticed. We have to let the blessings of the Lord overpower everything that the enemy is doing. Whatever the enemy is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Let God's glory. Amen. Let God's power. Amen. Hallelujah. Overpower that situation. Go fight the devil in prayer. Tell the devil what time it is. Amen. Start activating. Hallelujah. In the spirit, let the devil know your time is over every single day on Monday. Your time is over Tuesday. Your time is over Wednesday. Devil, your time is over Thursday. Your time is over Friday. Devil, your time is over Saturday. Your time is over Sunday. Your time is over. When we come at the devil like that, letting him know every day, your powers is stripped. Whatever you did, whatever y'all professed into my life, whatever y'all tried to project, it has no power over me anymore. Amen. It has no, no reign over my mind, no reign over my spirit. I see money. If the devil's trying to, to make you poor and, and, and have you living in poverty, you got to see the money of, you got to see the money of your, didn't the Bible, didn't Jesus say, I'm going to prepare mansions for you? 
Didn't he say that I'm going to prepare a place for you, right? So our father is the owner, says the word, of riches and glory. Nothing, we should be lacking nothing. We should not have to ask anybody for nothing, amen? The Lord, amen, is our provider, amen? He can make things appear, amen, hallelujah. Even when we opened up the church, some may know this testimony, some may not know this testimony, but I'm gonna say it just because I feel somebody needs to hear it today, right? I remember when we first opened up the church in Greensboro 13 years ago, right? One of the things that I seen the Lord do that to me was just like so mighty and powerful, right? We didn't have the money to open up the, 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 the we did everything. Like we had fixed everything for three months, but we did, there was, we didn't have money for the signs and we didn't have money for the food for the first service. I remember that the Lord told me and my husband to go into a fast for three days, right? Three days. We're fasting and all of a sudden my husband, he's at his job and the Lord tells him to go walk into a certain bush, right? Now, mind you, you at work, you doing what you're doing and the Lord is telling you to go walk to a bush, right? Anybody in their right mind is going to be like, God, why you got me walking to this bush? Like what's in the bush? Like imagine you, you crazy going into a bush. <clears throat> ain't nothing over there. Ain't no building. Ain't no businesses. Ain't no nothing. The Lord told my husband, go walk over there, right? He walks over there and he sees on the floor, amen, a big um, stack of money wrapped up in a rubber band. And the Lord told him, he's like, this is the money that take this money and use it for the things in the church. This is the money that, that, that you needed, right? So my husband, he goes and he puts it away. Hearing what the Lord said, comes home and tells me about it. And I'm like, all right, well, where's the money? How much is in it? He's like, I don't know. I didn't count it. And I said, how could you not count it? I said, how could the Lord said it's yours? And he's like, yeah, but what if somebody comes to claim it? I said, you found that thing in the bush. I said, you think somebody's coming to claim that? I said, ain't nobody coming to claim that. I said, the Lord gave us that. Let's go get the money. So we go to his job where he had put the, the money away or whatever. And we come home and we start counting it. Mind you, we'll start counting it like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Boom, 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Boom, 200. Boom. And we did the same thing. 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, uh, almost a thousand dollars exactly was in that rubber band <clears throat> wrapped up. Okay. And we sitting there counting the money and it was just enough for the banner that we needed to have in, in the front of the church. And it was enough to get some chicken, some, some soda and stuff like that, napkins, plate spoons, so, something for the, for the first service, right? And that's just one, amen, Walker? That's just one. There was another time that I remember I didn't have, um, I didn't have a lot of money. We was, you know, it was in the beginning. The kids were younger. Amen. This was before we had the cupcake shop. I remember, um, you know, just not having the money for the snacks for the Wednesday night service and people at the church wasn't offering, like they wasn't giving anything. So, you know, my husband is like, Hey, you're going to go get the sodas and, and the chips and stuff like that. And I looked at him and I was like, no, I was like, I only got $20. This is my only $20 for the week. I need to save this for the kids. I said, what if I need a loaf of bread? What if I need some, some eggs? What if I need some orange juice? I said, I need to save this for gas for an emergency. So he's looking at me like, you know, like th that's wrong. Like, I don't care if it's the last. He's like, go get the chips and everything for the service. Like, right? Like God's going to provide. And I'm looking at him like, yeah, I know God's going to provide, but I'm not going to be stupid. I'm not going to be foolish and take my little $20, okay, my last $20 and put it in the church. The church has to learn to be without the chips and the soda today, right? I was like, I'm not doing it. So he, ta he still goes and drives me to Food Lion, right? Before getting to the church, right? This is my heart. This was like 13 years ago. So you can see how God works in our life and how he's perfecting our faith, how he's perfecting your spirit. There are certain things right now that the Lord is revealing to me that you're needing. You're waiting on certain things. You're waiting for that financial breakthrough and it's going to come through, but you got to trust him. Amen. You got to trust his will. So um, you got to trust his power and his might. Look at what you want to see how the Lord does. So give me an amen. If you want to see how the Lord then slap, slap me in my face, amen, crushed my spirit and taught me a valuable lesson, amen.
So I go to the food line. He goes and drops me off in front of the food lion. I'm upset. I'm looking at my husband like, yo, you hard headed. Like I told you, I'm not spending my last $20. So I got mad and I opened the door and I boom, slammed the door, right? My kids is in the back. Here I am acting all type of ratchet. Okay. Past, ratchet pastor. Just like, you know, people in the church didn't even know I was dealing with that and I was going through that, right? Cause I'm just, you know, I'm not mad. I'm not upset, right? I love to bring chips. I love to do that, but I don't like my husband messing with my last. Like I'm just, I love to pay my bills on time. I love to like, I'm very, I'm all about money management. Like I'm very on my bills, right? All on my stuff. Like don't play with my money. Like don't play with my kids. I need to make sure that we're good. I'm not going to go ask nobody for nothing. I don't want to ask nobody. I don't want to need nothing. So Lord, I need, I need you to, to help me. I believe in you. I believe you, but I need to stash my little $20. Don't bother me with my $20. My husband, don't bother me with my $20. People could go without the chips and soda for one service, right? So boom. So I go to, he drops me off. I slam the door. I go inside and I try to get the buy one, get one free special for the chips. I go and I find a little special on some of the sodas. I think it was like three for five. I get the buy one, get one free for the chips. I think the chips was like $4. Then another chip that was free is another $4. So, you know, it was like probably like $15 and everything with tax. And I had the $20. So I go to the register and I go there and the lady standing in front of me, listen to how God played with me, did, did me. The lady standing in front of me, was talking to the lady in the register. When I come to put my little chips, my little soda, both of them stop talking. They start looking at me and then they look on the floor. Both of them turn around and they look on the floor at the same time. And they're both seeing something that I'm not seeing. So they grabbing my attention. I'm just trying to put the stuff on there and, and have the lady move forward. And they both look at me and they're like, ma'am, is that your money there? And they was like, and I looked down and you know what the Lord said to me at that moment? He was like, here's your little $20. Here's your little crusty $20. Since so you could remember, amen, that I am the God of the gold and silver. That's what God said to me at that moment. You don't know how crushed I was when they looked at me and they like, ma'am, is that yours, ma'am? You dropped your money, right? I look at the floor at that point. The exact moment the Lord speaks to me and says, here's your $20. You didn't want to spend your $20 on me. You didn't want to spend your last $20 that like you forget who I, you forgot who I was. Like you forgot who I am. Like there is nothing to me more powerful than hearing the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God as a loving father, come and bring, right, um, Giona, that, pr that protection, bringing that love, amen, bringing that, 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 that joy, amen, bringing that crushing spirit at that moment, at that time, because you got to understand that at that moment I was crying, not only because the Lord spoke to me and I heard his voice at that moment and realized that, yo, he's watching us, he's watching me, I felt stupid. I felt silly. I'm like, dang, man, here I am, a mighty woman of God, not trusting God and, and knowing like, man, who he is. And it's like, sometimes we forget his glory. We forget his power in that moment. We forget what he could do. Amen. We forget all the things that he could have somebody come in and just pay it. He could have somebody come in. And if he doesn't, is he still not good? Amen. Is his mercy and, and, and doesn't his mercy endure it? Like the word of God says forever. Amen. This is why I tell you, amen. When we're dealing with witchcraft, opposition, right? Witchcraft and other forms of opposition, they can manifest into negativity and doubt from others, including us. Who puts the doubt in us? The enemy. We have to know, no, I know who God is. I know his power. I know his grace. I know his mercy. I know it all too well because all the battles have taught me and prepared me for this moment. Amen. This is why we cannot, you know, doubt when God comes into our life to do certain things. We cannot doubt it when people leave. People going to come into your life, <clears throat> let them come into your life. The Lord is bringing them. People want to leave, let them leave. The Lord is allowing them to leave. But when you pray, you say, God, keep bringing into my life those that need to be in it and keep exiting those that don't need to be in it. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust your way. No weapon and, 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 and any demonic form of witchcraft is going to prosper 
Amen. Hallelujah. Against my life. It is not. We have to stand in position in prayer, stand in position in fasting, stand in position in the word, stand your ground. You are a warrior. Amen. Don't forget it. God is perfecting you. <clears throat> Amen. He's perfecting your faith right now. Amen. I know that many of you are feeling the spirit of the Lord right now. I know that you are feeling him moving because I feel him moving. I know. Amen. Hallelujah. That he is here. This is why when we look at Ephesians 6, 12, we know this verse verse. We've heard it a thousand times when you're going through it, when you got no power, when you got no might, when you got no strength. God bless you, Gina, my love. Amen. When you have no, no authority, when you feel like you lost it all, when you feel like the enemy is just laughing at you. <laughs> look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Remember what the word of God says. It says for we, you got to sometimes put your hands in your head and go like this. You got to say for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, right? Sometimes you got to do that. Amen. You got to get on your knees and say it to the Lord and say, God, we do not wrestle. Amen. With flesh and blood flesh and blood. We're not going to wrestle the way you want to wrestle. He's wrestling with your finances. He's wrestling with your health. He's wrestling with your mindset. He's wrestling with your partner. He's wrestling with your kids. Our battle, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We are women of God. We are kingdom minded. We have the resources. Everything that is ours cannot be touched in the mighty name of Jesus. All right. It cannot be touched. It says, but it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He says, but against rulers, that's who you're wrestling with, right? You're wrestling, wrestling with rulers is the rulers of darkness. Amen. Hallelujah. It is against authorities. There are systems set in place who you're wrestling with your finances. You're wrestling with the system. Amen. You're, you're wrestling because you need a breakthrough. You're wrestling because you're, these rulers and these authorities are coming together with the cosmic power. Y'all be seeing them Nigerian videos, amen, that I be putting on my page. Y'all better watch that. That's, that's cosmic power. Those cosmic powers that are just doing things, that's in the word of God. People may be come on my page and be like, oh, those little Nigerian videos, like, yo, that's crazy. Like, she just be watching crazy stuff. No. The spirit has revealed to me those are cosmic powers, amen, that are there, amen. You want to see the devil operate? You want to see how he, how he moves? Start watching those Nigerian videos that I put on my page. They only three minutes long. Some of them are a minute. Those are cosmic powers, amen, over the present darkness. So there are things in your life, amen, that the Lord is going to put in position. But as you pray, you have to gather together together with a real group of Christians that really understand this thing, that really understand, that can see in a different dimension, that can see with a different power, that can see with a different grace, amen, that can see with a different anointing, amen, because God, when he gives us and reveals these sick, secret things, when he reveals these hidden things to his prophets, to his people, there are certain people that are not going to be able to identify, things that you cannot see. So they're going to be able to identify things that you know nothing about. And this is why you got to trust the prophets. You got to trust the men and women of God because they will spare you. Amen. From the embarrassments, they will spare you. Amen. This is why having a covering and having a ministry and having a mentorship and having a mentor is so important because they will cover you. Amen. From shame. They will cover you from an embarrassment. They will cover you because you are there and your submission, right, is, is a dunamis power, amen, your submission is powerful, amen, your submission and their willingness to cover you, amen, when it joins together as one, it destroys the works of darkness, it destroys the witchcraft attacks, it destroys it, because when you give, when you serve, amen, when you have a heart of gratitude that says, God, I'm gonna give, amen, I'm gonna sow into the kingdom of God, I'm gonna 
gonna go and I'm gonna serve my time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some things. I'm gonna sweep the church. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean the bathroom. I'm gonna see if I can help the pastors, you know, pass some flyers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what they need. Amen. What can we do for the kingdom? When you have that heart that says, man, let's put together things for the kingdom of God. Let's do things. Let's advance the kingdom. Let's move forward. Let's, let's have projects. Let's do things. Let's make things happen. When you have that type of heart, amen, the devil will come and say, you know what? You see that little heart that they got? It needs to be destroyed. You see that little faith that they got? We need to come and destroy that faith. We need, you see that they, you see, they want to get married. We need to destroy that, that thing before, before it happens. You see, they want to have children. They want to have kids. They want to have a future. They want to have a business. You, you know how many times me and my husband will sit there praying about something and wanting to do things and we present it to the Lord. And here comes a demonic dream trying to bring setback and delays. Here comes people into our life that the enemy uses to try to bring setbacks and delays. Here come fake people coming to bring distractions. Here come people that come in to waste our time. And we're like, man, all of these obstacles for what? What is the reason for all these obstacles? What is the reason that the devil keeps trying to, to destroy us? Like, what is it that we cannot see? Right? You ever feel like that? Where they, they attacking you and you're like, why? I'm not doing anything. Like, what is the, what does the devil want with me? Like, I'm not, I'm not bothering him. I'm, I'm not, you know, doing nothing, you know, out of the ordinary. Like, why is the devil bothering me? Like, I ain't bother him. Like, let him go back to his hole where he crawled out of. I'm not doing nothing. It's not that you're doing anything. It's just that you're a warrior and you're in a battlefield and you're there without armor. You're there without tools. You're there without your spiritual weapons. Like you got authority and you're not using it. You got the, the power and the resources to change atmospheres, to change things, to change systems, and you're not using it. You're not putting it to use. And sometimes when you do that and you get discouraged, right, it's like you just feel like you're throwing things and throwing things and throwing things, and you just feel like the opposition, Amen is winning. You feel like you just throwing things for no reason. No, you got to keep throwing things in the spirit. Even if you don't see like we're, when we pray, amen, we know that the, the powers and the yokes of darkness are breaking. But I also know, right, that my prayers, the things that I'm praying about, it also has the ability to, to do things right in, in other areas that I'm not even praying for. Like the prayer is going to break yokes in other areas that I'm not even praying in because the anointing breaks yokes. Amen. Not just the yoke you want it to break. It breaks yokes in particular. This You don't have to utter things in prayer. The Bible says that the spirit of the one true living God will utter things for you in groanings in the spirit. So there are certain things that we got to know. And there are certain things that we don't have to know. Amen. So when you look at number five, right, when you look at Jesus and his miracles, right, amid the, the opposition, right, he had to do miracles. He, he had to do it despite the doubters. Amen. And it says that Jesus performed miracles even in the faces of skepticism. All right. Even in the midst of the opposition. Amen. Showing that faith can overcome doubt showing that faith can overcome the enemy's power. Evil witches, evil warlocks, evil mother-in-laws, evil sister-in-laws, evil haters working against you, going to sow things in the cemetery, going to take your hair, your sneakers, your belongings, your underwear, steal things from you. Amen. People who trying to come into your life and curse you, drop things in your church, but you know, curse your church, curse your ministry, curse your children, curse your marriage. They're trying to curse your womb. Okay. The Bible says that Jesus performed his miracles in the midst of darkness, in the midst of enemies, in the midst of these people wanting to do what they wanted to do. Faith prevailed because, and, and the power and the miracles and the signs and wonders. Can I get an amen somebody? They was prevailing because they would, they had their mind, their eyes fixed on Jesus. This is why in this season, I'm not playing with nobody. They want to come and play with me. Let them come and play with me. I'm not here. Amen. Hallelujah. To play with the devil. We are not going to play with the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to let God. Amen. Hallelujah. Have his way. We are not going to let the enemy. 
amen, steal anything from us because he cannot, amen. Everything that is ours, amen, it belongs to us. We cannot let the devil steal, amen, what belongs to us. What belongs to us, amen, it belongs to us. Is not the devils, is not the enemies, amen. They can, they cannot have it, amen. They could try, amen, but they not going to prevail, amen. They could really try, but they won't prevail in anything that they want to do, amen. They could try it over and over and over again, amen, but they are not going to get away with it. Trust and believe when I tell you the devil, amen, hallelujah, he's not going to get away with everything he's making you suffer for and go through. That's not your portion. Wake up woman of God and know that's not your portion. What you're going through is not your portion. Just get into alignment. Amen. Get into position. Amen. Surround yourself with a real covering. Surround yourself with real Christians, not people that's over there, you know, wasting time and the devil's over here prevailing and advancing. You need to surround yourself with ministries. Amen. That understand <clears throat> that the devil is advancing and we're not going to let it happen. Not on our watch. That's real watchmen that see in the prophetic and see like, yo, the devil was going on with this youth. Like, yo, let's set up a team. Let's go reach the youth. Like, let's go bring people. Let's gather the women of God together. Like, let's put a, let's do something for these kids. You know what five women and, and you know what five powerful women can do in a small church? They can fill the house of God. Amen. By being like-minded, being kingdom-minded. I hate it. Even in ministry, all the years that I've been in ministry, a lot of women that come into our ministry just come because they need something, you know, and it's like, okay, God gives it to them once they get it. But after that, all right, can we focus on the will of God? Can we focus on the word? Can we focus on the work of God? Could we be a booming ministry? Could we, you know, advance? This is why you see fake ministries advance more than the real ministries. It's not that the fake ministries, you know, are advancing because they real and they're authentic. No, they just hide the, the truth. Amen. And they advance with cosmic powers. You see, when you really understand a church cannot grow if they cannot overcome cosmic powers. That's what I be trying to teach real Christians all the time in my mentorship, real Christians in our ministry. I've been doing these videos, like I said, since Periscope. That doesn't make me an expert, you know, like, like there's other people that, you know, they know the word or whatever. And I'm not saying that I'm the top person, but what I'm saying is what the Lord has revealed to me in all of these years that I've been serving him is that there are cosmic powers out there. And if we don't align our heart to the word, if we don't align our heart to the prophet, to the pastor, to the leadership, if we don't have in, if in our heart, we don't have a desire to say, you know what? I'm going to be committed to this ministry. I'm going to be committed to these pastors. You can't say that if you're not first committed to God. This is why he says Jesus did all of these things, right? And when Jesus raised um, Jairus' daughter, he faced mockery from the crowd, but he still um, proceeded with his faith in Mark 5, 35, right? So then when you look at Mark 5, 36, what does that say? He said, overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, do not be afraid, just believe. You see, Jesus was like, I'm going to go into this room. I'm going to do this miracle. But I can't take everybody with me. Everybody's not going to come with me to do this miracle because there's too many people around me and my circle who are doubting. So because you doubting, you can't come with me in my winning season. You can't come with me into the next level. So sometimes warriors, they battle witchcraft. They battle spiritual warfare attacks because the women of God, God is saying, I need y'all to be kingdom minded. I need y'all to be ready for war. I need y'all to be ready for battle. But for you to be kingdom minded, you have to believe it while you're by yourself. Can I get an amen, somebody? That hurts. Because you're like, man, I don't want to be by myself. I don't want to look at, look at people in the USA when they join the military. Do they not have to leave their parents behind and join and go? Imagine, you know how hard it is 
When children, right, they have to leave their mother, their father, their brothers, their sisters, their family. They were raised in a good home, right? Raised in the things of the Lord. And all of a sudden they got to leave and they got to go to war. And they're going what? By themselves. They can't take their cousin with them. They can't take Buki and Muki with them. They can't take nobody with them. They have to go by themselves into the battlefield so that they can think straight, so that they could be reprogrammed, amen, so that they can be um, trained up in a way that is going to prepare them, amen, in the spirit. This is why I say people come into a ministry, you want to fast with us, you need to fast every week. You want to pray with us, you need to be ready all the time. Yes, I got a lot of things going on, but guess what? I do want to give the battalion to certain women. That's why I be asking women, like, you know, only the ones that are associated to our ministry. I'm not asking random strangers, okay? People who are, I could, I could get random strangers and be like, hey, you want to work for me? Like, $15 an hour and do this for the ministry? No. In the mighty name of Jesus, I could do that for maybe an assistant, my assistant, right? But not for like, hey, can I pay you $15? You want to go pray? Pray for an hour. I'll give you $15 an hour. Like, come on now. I'll give you like two or three hours a week. Like, you know, you could do that, but why? Why do that when you could prepare warriors in your ministry? Why do that when you could wait on the Lord for him to prepare their heart and bring the right people? Why do that? This is why waiting is important when people are laughing at you, when people are ridiculing you. It's important because you're building what? You're building stamina, amen? You're building faith, the perfecter of your faith. He's he's building it, amen, hallelujah. He's, he's molding it, amen? So the last one that I'm gonna give y'all is number six, is community and unity and faith, amen? When you have supportive relationships instead of relationships that promote arguments in your life, amen? When you have people that seek to build up your, sis, your brothers and sisters in the faith, that is real unity and it is crucial for you so that you could be able to overcome challenges, amen, in your life. You're not going to be able to overcome challenges in your life if you're not surrounded by people who are serious. It's like you a fat girl and you want to lose weight. I'm that friend. I'm, you can't depend on, I'm not the friend to help you lose weight. I'm so sorry. I'm the friend that's going to take you to work out and go take you to have tacos afterwards. I'm so sorry because I'm not strong in that area. <laughs> Uh, can I get an amen? Are y'all understanding me? I'm not strong in that area. I love health, okay? I love wellness. I love healthy things, right? But I'm not that friend. I'm just not. I'm bad at that. Like, yo, we worked out for an hour. Let's go have some Mediterranean food. Like, yo, we worked out for an hour. Let's go to the buffet. Like, let's go to Golden Corral. Like, let's go have some pizza. Like, yo, you want some, you know, taquitos al pastor? Like, let's go. Let's get some. Let's go to Chili's. Like, let's go get some steak. Like, I'm just like, yo, let's go to Olive Garden. I'm like, yo, let's go eat. I'm not that friend. I cannot hold anybody accountable in their weight. Why? Because I battle that in my own life. So I'm not going to like, you know, like, yes, I, I try to eat healthy. I try. But guess what? I love to eat. I love going out to eat all the time. Like it doesn't like even yesterday we went out to Chili's. Like we had bomb, you know, bomb food. I had my little steak, my mashed potatoes. I'm always going out to eat. So it's like, I'm so sorry. I cannot help you in that area. But in the area of faith, I could help you and keep you accountable. In the area of the word, in the area where if you're struggling, you could always call me and I'm going to give you a word. I'm going to inspire you. I'm going to help you get out that rut. I'm going to help you see prophetically, see what God is trying to get you to understand. And then that person has to do their part and be like, okay, I believe this is the word. I'm coming in agreement. Like, all right, I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to get this done, right? But if you come to me for advice, for weight loss, I could tell you what to do. But I may not be the one to, to do it with, if that makes sense, right? I may not be the one for you. You may need somebody else that's going to, you know, keep you on your meal preps and stuff like that. I'm the type of person I can have meal preps there and I'll still go out to eat and be like, all right, yeah, I'll just save it for like next week or I'll save it for tomorrow and then I'll come back to it, right? So I have no stamina. I'm weak in that area. I have no stamina there, but in the area of the spirit, amen, because I understand, right, how is life or death, right? When it comes to spiritual warfare, I want you guys to see what Ephesians 4, 3 says. This is why he says in his word, make every effort, 
amen, to keep the unity of the spirit, amen, through the bond of peace. You see, when we, when you are surrounded by real women of God, the, the leaders, the prophets keep a spirit of peace. When they see things out of line, why you think those elders back in the days when they, in the Bible, when they used to go to them for counsel and they used to go to them for advice and they were quarreling amongst each other. And they was like, no, the word says this. And another one will come through. No, the word says that who's right. Who's wrong. Let's go now to the council. Like they took pride in that. Like, like let's go down to the council. Let's see what the elders say. Let's see who they're going to give the right and if they gave them the the green light and was like they right they used to walk around prideful and boastful but when Jesus came in right he came in and he's like uh uh he's like we need to we need to change this like this spirit needs to change we got to stop people from being boastful we got to stop people from wanting to do their own ways and show off and pray and fast and do it like the hypocrites do no we need people amen that are going to be submitted into the spirit of God we need people that are not going to sell the gospel we need people that are going to do his will and you know my will my way this is how the the father was thinking this is how Jesus amen God bless you amen this is how he was thinking this is why he said to us in Ephesians 4 3 he said make every effort to keep in the faith amen to keep the unity of the spirit amen we keep the unity of the spirit together we keep it strong we keep the bond of peace amen because wise people, when they give counsel, it doesn't spread you away from God's will. It doesn't take you away from those people, amen, hallelujah, that the enemy is trying to take you away, right? He takes you away from the people that build you up. He takes you away from the positions and the places where you're supposed to be at. Your presence is needed, amen, in this ministry. Your presence, your consistent prayers is needed. Your consistent sowing in this ministry is needed, Amen. And if y'all come to, to our city here, Ecuador, there's always going to be work. Amen. You want to get on the plane? You want to come with us? Amen to South America. You want to go work? You want to go see what it's like? Let us know. Amen. Because that's what we're preparing for. Amen. Today's the last weekend. Like that's it. This weekend, I'm going to be done with the house. Done with everything. Like that's it. I'm, I'm going to cry. Y'all going to see me. I'm going to put a video out there. Y'all going to see this beautiful house that we saying goodbye to. Amen. This beautiful house that nobody would say goodbye to. Everybody's like, girl, you crazy. You got the most beautiful closet. Three car garage. Girl, you insane. Girl, you freaking crazy as crap, girl. You leaving that backyard, beautiful, spacious backyard, beautiful deck, all that furniture you getting ready. If you were to come to our church, my God. All the furniture, all everything, picture frames, everything everywhere is a nightmare. That's why people are like, are you open the church yet? I can't. Like right now I have too much on my mind. I'm going crazy with the furniture and the yard sales and work and everything like that. And I, I just need, that's why some of the brothers, the new brothers are waiting for us. And I'm like, I promise you, we coming back. Let us just figure this out. But then we got to go to Ecuador. So it's like, you know, we, we have we have things that we're doing. Amen. So we're just letting ourselves be led by God and we're trusting him no matter what. Nothing that we have done is in vain. Nothing that we will do is going to be in vain. And nothing that you have gone through and what you're going through right now, sis, is in vain. The spiritual warfare, the witchcraft attacks, nothing is in vain. God is perfecting something so beautiful, so big so mighty that you can you the, the blessings that the word of God says that God is going to pour into your life they're going to be so big amen that you're not even going to have room for the overflow you're not even going to have room because the blessings is going to be so big amen you're not even going to have room for it amen that's how big God blesses people amen that's how big God does things amen so I pray that this word amen today was a blessing to your life amen if you enjoyed it give it a like if you want to share it with somebody send this message to them copy the link if you want to tag your friends in the um comment section tag your sisters amen send this video to them so that it can be a blessing to their lives amen and so that the lord can use this video amen hallelujah to encourage them and if you want to fast with us 
on Friday against Destiny Exchanges. I, you know, we already have a beautiful program. We did it for the first time yesterday. We followed the program. It was beautiful. Like, I loved it. God moved. We had Pastor Netta come and bring a word. We have another sister that's going to be coming next week. Every week, we're going to be having different women, amen, in the room and in our program. You can come in. You're going to hear women praying. It's not like a call where you have to call them, but when you get into the prayer room, we'll have only one call. I think it's around noon. Amen. Where we bring a prophetic release and it's quick. It's like 30 minutes while women are on their lunch break because we know women got to go back to work. Amen. But it's going to be a good way. Amen. For them to plug in and, you know, at 12 o'clock, hear the word and, and, you know, just be blessed by it. Amen. Hallelujah. But I know that there are some women that may not be able to jump in. So I don't know if we're going to still do the word and a voice memo, but we're still trying to, you know, work things and tweak little things here and there. But, you know, I feel like the fasting definitely broke some yokes. It did some, you know, mighty things in the spirit. Amen. And I encourage you to fast with us. Set your alarm clock for Fridays, 7 o'clock a.m. and go into the prayer war room and be ready. Amen. Download the, the um, I'm going to put on the website too. Download our prayer program. I haven't seen no ministries out here doing that. Amen. Nobody, no other ministries is doing that. So go download it. Amen. And let it be a blessing to your life. Follow the schedule with us. Amen. I have prayer points, things that everybody who's in the fast with us, things that you guys need to pray for. These are downloads that were given to me by the Lord so that you guys could pray for these certain things. Amen. And know, God bless you, beg my love. Amen. And know that, um, you know, this is how we defeat the enemy. Amen. Y'all praying for us. We're praying for you. We'll have people praying for each other and we have a designated time to pray over your petitions. Amen. So it's just, like I said, a blessing. It was so beautiful. I had a lot of um, good feedback from all all of the ladies in that were in the fast yesterday um, and even those that, you know, we've been having testimonies for like the past three weeks, amen, because we've been fasting nonstop, amen, and we are seeing God's hand move and do mighty things in our life, amen, so I love you guys, let me let you go, keep me in prayer, that's it, it's the last weekend, doing the last stuff in this house and I'll bring, give y'all a video soon, like I said, so y'all can see the house, I never really did the tour, I was gonna do the tour before, but I didn't want people to be choking and be like, that's that's her house. Like, you already know we got too many haters in here. <laughs> we already, I already got too many haters up in here. I was like, let me not give them nothing else to be hating on. Amen. So, um, but yeah, this house is beautiful. I'm going to be crying a lot, you know, but I trust God. I'm so ready to go back to Ecuador. I cannot wait to get on that plane again. I cannot wait to land and step foot in Ecuador. We've been watching my videos. Um, you know, just praying to the Lord and just, you know, not understanding certain things, but just trusting that, that, you know, nothing is going to be able to stop his will, you know, and my husband feels the same way about it. And, you know, it's going to be new for us, but we are up for the challenge. Amen. We know that, you know, greater is, is the, the hay that is in us and, and the people that are over there, they definitely going to appreciate and be blessed. Amen. By our presence and us bringing the word. Amen. We know that there are people over there that are going to receive us. <clears throat> Amen. With love. We know that there are people that are waiting. There are people over there wait, still waiting on us. Amen. To, to come back. Amen. And we just thank God. Amen. For those people that are praying for us. They're like, we're praying. We want you to come back when you guys are coming back. And I just cannot wait. Amen. To, to go back over there. I feel like a lot of things are going to be fulfilled. Amen. In our life. I feel like we're going to be walking in that obedience. Amen. Once we go over there, because it's been a battle for those of you that have been with me for the past three years, you know, this whole thing with Ecuador and the church has been a real battle. And and it's always been since the day the Lord started to put the stuff in Ecuador in our heart. <clears throat> and we started to get involved in the missions. When the Lord started to redirect our attention towards that and everything, all hell started to break loose in the U.S., um, you know, that's when a lot of the, the warfare intensified. Amen. But like I said, I am going to feel a huge spirit of peace. 
Amen. The day we get on that plane, the day we're going to get, I'm going to be so excited. And like I said, it's just going to be a new journey. And I'm looking forward to learning more about the mission field. Amen. You could be in the battlefield and have your church, but you know, missions and a different nation that is not your own is very different. You know, it's not the same thing as a lot of things you're going to have to get used to. There's a lot of things, you know, it's not like the U.S. You know, yes, they may have a U.S. embassy over there, but it's a different when you're not a citizen of that place, you know, so you're going there like you're the immigrant, okay? People come in here and they're like in the U.S., like they the immigrants, you know, and we, we, we the citizens here and we're Americans, but guess what? When we go to another country, amen, that is not our own and we bring the gospel of peace and we bring the word of God and we bring knowledge and wisdom and revelation, right? And we bring um, provision, amen, for those people and we start, and they see that, you know, we start to look at the needs of those people. I don't want to get emotional, but when you start to look at the needs of those people and what they need and you start to, you know, separate yourself from everything you knew about ministry and you look at ministry through a whole different way, you know, that's when you're starting to break through, you know, systems because now you're bringing is that you're asking the Lord, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. And you're seeing now people who are needing the gospel, right? This is, is different in other nations. You can easily go into the street, create a crusade. Like people will come from the North, the South, the East and the West people in other countries, unlike the U S and you know, they respect the things of God. They really, you know, gather together for prayer. It is a serious thing in their country. You know, they do not, yes, right? They do not play with their prayer. Like, you know, people, even if they're real strict Catholics, they don't play with prayer. Like they, there is, you know, things going on in the country, but in other nations, they respect prayer so much and they know that that's the power. And it's so crazy because all those other countries, they don't have what we have right? But yet in those countries, right, are the, the prayers don't, they don't cease to stop. Like they don't stop. Like they pray and they, they, they there. And when they got it, everything they got, they share. And which is beautiful. Like I said, I just can't wait to see those new spirits, those new people. Like, you know, it's just like, we've been watching videos nonstop, even while we move in, even while we pack and I got suitcases here, you know, we, the, the last clothes and stuff like that. And we're just like really, you know, ready, you know, for the, for the next season, we're ready to go to the church and start having like yard sales. I'm ready to start, you know, giving things things away, taking stuff to the good world. Like I'm ready. Like just Lord, take this, take that, getting ready, um, getting rid of mass stuff, pots, pans, everything has been cr a crazy journey. Amen. But I trust that everything that, you know, everything that I'm, uh, and it's not my first time doing this. Amen. But in this house, we've been here. For, I did it a lot when I was younger, but in this house, imagine we've been here thir almost 13 years with the kids, 13 years with the church. Amen. So mm -hmm. It's different. You know, it's different. It's 12 years of memories here. You know, the kids are all grown. They all working. You know, they all, they graduated, you know, high school. They, they did, they doing their thing. They working now. And, you know, I'm a real proud mom. You know, we, we put our kids through homeschool and it's just a different season. And it's going to be a different season for them too. Amen. For them to see, you know, another country, even though their dad is Ecuadorian, right? Half Ecuadorian. And he always went when he was younger, every summer he was always going to Ecuador. So, and, you know, Quito is like so, you know, he, he knows it like the back of his hand because he used to go every summer, you know, but to have his family and us, you know, re relocate there and go back and forth, you know, not just be there, but be there and in the U.S. going back and forth with the church. I don't know how we're going to do it. I'm destined in prayer, but we're just going to, like I said, be obedient to God and just, you know, doing things, baby steps. The first thing we need to do is get out this house. Amen. That's the first thing we need to do. We already got our eyes on a little, on the new apartment that we got. And that's it. We're just keeping our eyes, you know, focused on God and just focus on what's next. Amen. So, you know, I pray that this video, everything that I said, it really brings clarity to your life. Amen. The things that you see me going through, you know, let it inspire you. Like, yo, separate yourself from drama, nonsense, people always wanting to be in your business, all that. Just do you. Amen. Keep your eyes focused on God and every, and the blessings are, and the overflow is going to come. Amen. But you got to keep remembering removing the obstacles, keep removing the evil people, amen, the, the naysayers, the gossipers, the
despise. Keep removing them, amen, out of your life. And you're going to see God do mighty things in your life. You're going to see him blessing you, blessing your children, blessing your hands, blessing. There's going to be a, 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 a circle of protection, amen, over your life because of your ability to take the things of God seriously. Amen, guys. So I love y'all. I will catch you guys in the next video. Um, and I'll catch you guys later. Have a beautiful weekend. God bless.